Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second episode of podcast series, Seller Speak. Seller Speak is the platform where we invite Amazon experts from different functions to share their business secrets to help sellers succeed in their Amazon journey. So get the most out of it. Today, we have Shane Morris with us. Shane is the business development director at GS1 US. Shane has been in all sides of the retail industry for the past 30 years and has gained perspective, experience, and critical information from every position he has held. His goal is to assist companies to evolve and thrive in the ever-changing industry with his expertise. Today, we'll be discussing everything about GS1 US and how we can leverage GS1 and UPC codes to fight supply chain threats. So let's bring the expert on the screen. Okay. Hey Shane, how are you? I'm Hello, doing good. Thank session. you so much. It's such a great honor to have you on the session. Thank you so much for being here. Well, I appreciate it. And that's probably the best introduction I've ever had. So thank you very much. Oh, that's <laughs> very sweet. Thank you. So how excited are you for the session? I'm very excited. Um, you guys have a great organization and so we're we're great to be able to come on and um, kind of spread the message and make it you know very specific to Amazon sellers you know they're an important part of our community uh, we have a lot of members uh, that are Amazon sellers so we're always excited to be able to talk to them and communicate with them. yeah even I have been talking with Amazon sellers and uh, they already know about GS1 and especially about you so our audience is as excited as I am today so let's get straight into the topic. Okay. Right. Yeah. So in order to sell on, um, you know, major online marketplaces, you need an authentic way to identify your products. Now, GS1 is the global authority for the unique identification of products and companies which serve as the building blocks for barcodes. Shane, what do Amazon sellers need to know about GS1 US? <clears throat> Well, you know, I do think that most Amazon sellers encounter our organization when they're just setting up their seller accounts and listing products for the first time. Now, a lot of times that's the first time they're going to hear about us. You know, if you don't have a traditional retail background, you might not know who we are. So um, let me explain who we are. GS1 US is a member organization of GS1, which is the largest global supply chain standards organization in the world. So Yes, as an Amazon seller, if you're importing, warehousing, shipping, and selling product, you are part of the supply chain. Um, a lot of sellers just think we are the issuer of the global trade item number or UPC, which we do, but we do much more than that. And I'll explain some of those things um, later on in the podcast if we have time. What I wanted your listeners to know is that GS1 US is a not-for-profit organization. Um, we are industry and member driven. And so I thought, you know, let me tell you just a quick story about how we got started and it might explain what that means. So <clears throat> over 50 years ago, the grocery industry was having problems getting their customers through the checkout line in a timely manner. Each item coming through had to literally be manually rung up. To make this problem worse, price changes were also done manually on the retail floor. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of labor, not to mention this whole process was very error prone. So the grocery industry came together and they decided they needed to find a solution to automate and solve these problems. What they did is they put together a group of experts from the industry to find a solution to the problem in which they did. They adopted the UPC barcode as the tool to automate checkout and price lookup. On June 26, 1974, at Marsh's Grocery Store in Troy, Ohio, the first item ever scanned was a 10-pack of Wrigley's Juicy Fruit Gum. And today, there's over 6 billion transactions on a daily basis by companies that use GS1 standards. So from this initiative, they created a not-for-profit company to help manage and gain adoption of this new UPC standard. And today, that company has grown into GS1. So... Let me just explain a little bit further. GS1 US began working in the um, every vertical of retail from grocery to consumer packaged goods to apparel and general merchandise. So what I want your listeners to do is think about the retail industry pre-internet. So before there was an Amazon or there was even an internet, I like to call this legacy retail. 
So pre-internet, if you were a seller, but you didn't have an internet to sell on. Um, so let's say you're a seller or a brand and you wanted to get your products into the marketplace. This is what you'd have to do. Number one, you'd have to find the retail buyer of the store that you wanted to get into. You'd have to try to get an appointment to pitch your product or you would go to a trade show, set up a booth. It was very costly. And again, hope a buyer would walk by. If you were lucky enough to get your brand um, into somebody's store, or let's say even luckier still, and you get it into uh, maybe two or three stores, you would then have to follow those specific retailers guidelines to get your products into the store. So for example, retailer A would have their list of guidelines, retailer B would have their list of guidelines, and retailer C would have their list of guidelines. So as a supplier, you had to kind of, you know, figure out what each one of those were. Well, over time, the retail community realized they could improve efficiencies by utilizing one common language or a set of standards so retailers and suppliers could conduct business at scale. They selected GS1 standards to facilitate unique product identification, unique logistics identification, and the exchange of documents like um, purchase orders and invoice in order to grow that scale. Okay, so we're in that legacy retail environment. Next, e-commerce becomes the new sales channel in the market. And what this did is it allowed millions of brands to enter the market and essentially just sidestep going through a retailer and they could connect with their consumers directly. Well, if you think about how e-commerce has evolved over time, we've seen the emergence of marketplaces, large retailers. So all these legacy retailers shifting and going online. And then you have all the businesses in between. You have 3PLs, solution providers like SellerApp, agencies, all these companies um, that were helping, um, you know, they're getting into the game and helping these sellers connect with customers in all the places that they shop. And we know consumers shop everywhere today. Well, as these platforms have grown and they're ingesting more and more product data, they've begun looking for ways to standardize their business process as well, to enable faster and improved product search, speed at receiving, picking and packing, and being able to verify and authenticate the products that are coming onto their platforms. They don't see them every day. So many of these companies have turned to GS1 standards to help them solve these problems. So that's kind of who we are and how we're working in the e-commerce space today. Indeed, Shane, I think GS1 is making it possible to do Amazon business more efficiently and safely. Now, most of the sellers are familiar with the GTINs and UPCs. For those who don't know, GTIN is a global trade item number and UPC is the universal product code you frequently see on the products that are scanned at a store checkout. Now, I have been interacting with Amazon sellers and they have this very question, why has Amazon asked sellers to use GS1 GTINs and UPCs? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And I know, you know, that's the first question I ask is what, why are they asking me to use this specific identifier? Well, I think everybody knows Amazon is very consumer centric and they want to ensure the customers coming to their platforms will be dealing with legitimate brands who sell legitimate products. Amazon needed a solution that would allow them to verify the products being listed were associated with the companies that were listing them. A global trade item number or UPC issued by GS1, it's going to have the following features. Number one, it's going to be globally unique and not replicated in the market. And it is globally unique. Number two, that global trade item number can be associated and linked back to the company that licensed it. And number three, that information will be put into our the GS1 global registry, which is a database. So the global trade item number, the company that it's linked to can be verified by the marketplace or retailer if they choose to do so. You know, this requirement helps Amazon identify G uh, G10s, their source from third party sellers that can't be verified. Um, it also helps prevent bad actors from hijacking a brand's current listing. So as a seller, if your listing is ever called into question by Amazon and you've licensed your G10s from GS1, you can always show them your GS1 certificate of authenticity and that will prove that you're the legitimate owner of that listing. Um, you know, the other thing I like to do is when, when you're presented with, you know, a requirement is to think about it from all sides. So if you think about this from Amazon's perspective, they're indexing millions of products and having their seller community sourcing G10s from one reliable source gives them visibility and the peace of mind of what is being listed and who is listing it.
So that's essentially why they've asked. I think this truly makes sense, Shane. The GS1 policy gives Amazon tighter control over what constitutes a valid listing and reduce the chances of you know, duplicate listings. Now, moving on to GTINs, GTINs helps sellers understand exactly what are they selling. It also helps to boost their ad performance by adding valuable details about the product and serving the ad in a more relevant way to users. This also means that your ads can serve in more places on Google, YouTube, and even on the partner sites. Now, sellers who have added correct GTINs to their product data have seen conversion rates increase up to 20 20%. So clearly, GTIN is crucial. Shane, how does a seller acquire GTIN? Yeah, well, the first, it's easy. The first thing you have to do is just come to our website, which is gs1us.org. And so remember .org because we are not for profit. So when you come to the homepage, you're just going to, you're going to see right on the homepage, a link that says get started. So, and you're going to be presented a couple of options. And we all know how the pandemic accelerated online business and how many small brands were getting into the market. In fact, 80% of our membership is small business. And in order to meet the needs of this growing new membership, we introduced the single G10 in 2020. So this gives small brands the options to license one G10 for $30. It's a great option for a business who's just starting out and doesn't have a lot of SKUs. But if you need more GTINs due to the size of your product offering or you have like a seasonal product like apparel, you'll want to license what we call a company prefix. And that option will be there as well. And a prefix allows a business to get multiple GTINs, anywhere from 10 to 100,000. Nice thing is, is you don't have to use them all at once. It, the prefix also gives you some additional abilities like creating case pack barcodes and generating some other GS1 identifiers that a brand may need. Um, as they scale and go into other retailers. Um, the one thing I like to talk about is one benefit, whether you, um, the, whether you re license the single G10 or the prefix, is all members get access to our Data Hub tool. So Data Hub is a portal where members can create and manage and store their G10. So when a member licenses a prefix or a single G10, they can log into Data Hub and assign their available G10s to their products. So in the case of a prefix, let's say you're a, a member or a seller and you've licensed 10 G10s but you only needed five at the time, you can assign those five and the additional five can be held in reserve until they're needed. And they'll stay right in this portal, um, in this repository, so you can always go back in and check and see how many you have left. Um, another benefit is you can also assign core attributes to your products in Data Hub, like product description, brand name, SKU, weight. I always felt um, when I was doing this, it was a great place to build a foundation for um, our product catalog um, because we could trust the G10s were going to be accurate. Now, if you actually do need to print a barcode for your packaging or your products, you can do this in Data Hub as well. And again, the upside to doing it here is you know that it's going to be accurate. Um, the tool is free. Every member gets access to it and it's very easy to use. Um, even if you're the first time logging on, there's prompts all along, all along the way that will help you understand what you're doing. And listen, if, it, if you're still having trouble, we have a great member services um, team. You can call or email them. Um, and I think we'll put that information in the chat and they can help answer any questions and get you started. So that's how you get a G10. Well, thank you, Shane, for answering this. Uh, this is really going to be helpful for all the viewers. Since, you know, we are talking about GTINs, Shane, can a seller use GS1 GTINs in other countries? Yeah, you know, since GS1 standards are global, they can be used across all platforms, marketplaces, and information systems in other countries. I think it's important for sellers to know this because we know today most manufacturing is cross-border. So if you're a seller, you license a G10 in the US and you found a factory in Mexico, and then you had that product shipped to Amazon Italy, you can be confident that that G10 um, licensed through GS1 will be valid wherever that product is being sold. Um, you know, you had mentioned this earlier, I thought it was great, but another area where the global trade item number has a significant impact is search engine optimization. Um, 
Almost 50% of all product searches begin on Google, and they've actually been advocating for brands to associate a G10 with their product listing since 2015. So if you're a brand that has its own web store and you're listing your product on Google Marketplace, like um, you had just said, they did a study that said assigning G10s to your products can increase impressions up to 40% and conversions up to 20%. Um, you listen, if you're doing your own SEO or, you know, most companies you have somebody, an agency do their SEO for them. Um, but they also state assigning G10s um, through str the structured data schema can significantly improve those um, search results as well. You know, um, SEO is complicated. It's like a science. And so I've been trying to um, educate myself more on this. So I was recently talking to an SEO expert about it, and he was trying to explain to me, you know, what Google does with that G10 and how, how they express those conversions. And um, I was having a hard time understanding. And so he said, Shane, let me just net it out for you. If Google asks for it, just do it because it mostly it most likely plays into their algorithms, even if they don't tell you how. So I'll just leave you with that. Well, awesome, Shane. Um, I think working with suppliers, partners, customers, and consumers has never been easier thanks to the G10. Uh, Shane, you have worked with renowned retail companies for the past couple of years, and it's been a year since you have been contributing as business development director at the GS1 US. So what is one thing you have thought about differently since working at GS1 US? Yeah, well, like you, you said, I've worked in retail for over 30 years and I love retail. I've loved it. What I love most about retail is e-commerce, because as I stated before, it's allowed millions of sellers to get their products into the marketplace and compete on a level playing field with larger brands. So, you know, before the Internet came, it was like who had the most ad spend. And with um, the Internet, any brand can get in and compete with anybody. But one thing I didn't realize until I came to GS1 US and started engaging with the e-commerce and Amazon communities were how many of these products were created as passion projects. So these aren't people just wanting to make a buck, but people who want to help other people. They want to help the environment. They just want to make the world a better place. Um, a great example of this is somebody who I've met recently. Her name is Sonia Hernandez, and she owns a company called Recover, Restore, Grow. So here's this driven woman who's a, she's a cosmetologist. She's not a brand developer or an item developer. She's a cosmetologist, but she created a product to help her customers recover from hair loss as a result of cancer. I think the Internet and Amazon has provided her a platform to help so many people that might not have had to um, had that option some time ago. So I guess what I've learned or at least what I've been exposed to since coming here is anyone who has a great idea is passionate and starts their business on a good foundation, can, seed, can succeed in contributing um, a little something extra to the world we live in. Well, that's very thoughtful, Shane. Uh, your diverse experience is definitely going to help GS1 grow and reach newer heights for sure. And with this, we have almost reached the end of the session. Thank you so much, Shane, for these valuable insights. I'm sure all the sellers watching this video have got a better understanding of the important aspects of GS1 Cheetons and UPCs. Thank you. Well, a big thank you to our audience for being a part of this. Your support means a lot to us. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to Seller App. Do click the bell icon so that you will never miss on any other video. We are coming up with exciting podcasts every Friday, so don't forget to tune in. And until the next time I see you, happy selling.